I'm working on a word processing document right now, but I've got to do a quick calculation and I need to check my calendar. I can hit Alt Control F3 and I've got a calculator or Alt Control and F4 and I've got my calendar. Now, as most people know by now, this is Sidekick. The important thing about Sidekick is it started a whole avalanche of RAM resident programs, some of which bump into each other in your RAM. Today, we'll take a look at RAM resident software, the benefits and the problems on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Schiffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, you know, when Sidekick first came out a couple of years ago, people thought it was a big deal that you could pop up a simple calculator on your screen in the RAM resident program. Uh, I think many of our viewers are probably familiar with the HP 12C calculator, mm -hmm. a very complicated, sophisticated financial calculator. Somebody has a new program out called HP 12C, and you can pop up a 12C in the middle of your word processor, not just a little calculator. It shows how far this RAM resident utility stuff has really come since uh, Sidekick. One of the problems, though, is these programs keep on bumping into mm -hmm. each other. Why does that happen? Well, there's an internal programming function in the DOS called Terminate and Stay Resident. And when it was first invented, I don't think that anyone really knew it was going to be used for. But uh, for example, Sidekick comes in there and terminates and stays resident. What it does is it grabs the information coming from the keyboard. And if it's for Sidekick, it processes. Otherwise, it throws it over its shoulder to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is that these programs all go in there and they try and uh, use the same keyboard information and they may or may not pass along the right way or they may overwrite one another's memory areas, things of that sort. So uh, we just have to figure out how to resolve all that. <laughs> well, Gary, on today's program, we're going to see some new examples of the latest generation of RAM resident software and we'll see some examples of software and standards which are attempting to solve the problem of RAM resident conflict. Now, if you can get all these RAM resident programs working together for you, you can become a very efficient computer user, as we'll see in this report. Bob Cowart writes books and magazine articles about computers on his computer. He needs to produce and print his manuscripts as quickly as possible to keep up with the rapid developments common to the computing industry. To help him meet his deadlines, Bob found a way to keep several programs loaded simultaneously in his computer's random access memory. I basically divide up the system RAM into three partitions, which all act as independent DOSes. So it's not a multitasking system. It let, lets me run three separate partitions of DOS simultaneously, uh, but only one program is actually active at any one time. For his latest book project on DBase 3, Bob wanted access to three programs at once, WordStar, DBase, and a screen capture program to store and print screen images. He managed to juggle all three, but it wasn't easy. It's a little bit like cooking or auto mechanics. If you do, if you do things in the wrong order, the recipe doesn't work out. And who knows what the, what the effects may be. Um, I found that only through experimentation the, uh, the workable order of loading these programs. So first off, you have to decide which keys you want to use to control your various RAM resident programs. And if you can redefine those, you want to do it in a way that's um, not only workable, but um, convenient for you, so that y you're not sacrificing keys that might be used elsewhere. Bob warns that keeping several programs in the random access memory calls for good human memory and some organization. Programs must be loaded in a certain order, and assigning the same keys for different functions can lead to disaster. But if you are careful, manipulating your computer's live memory can lead to some impressive, tangible results.
Joining us now in the studio is Dale Leatherman, the president of Prodex, and sitting next to Dale is David Whitney, a software developer with Access Learning Technology Corporation. Gary? Stuart, the idea of a RAM resident program is it's sort of loaded and stays behind the scenes, and you can call it back up anytime mm -hmm. you want. For example, with Lotus 1, 2, 3 and a background program behind it. And David has a good example of this. It's uh, called Note It. Let's take a look at that. Okay, yes, Gary. I'm going to load up Note It right now. The way I do that is I just type in the word Note from the command line in 1, 2, 3. Note it will load itself into memory and then it will load one, two, three. So I'll just press the return key right now and the noted copyright message comes up. And now note it will load one, two, three. So it's doing that right now. So in a sense you've got you've got Lotus resident inside noted rather than the other way around. Right, exactly. Um, this is a good approach when you're writing an accessory that uh, only needs to be resonant with one application. Mm -hmm. And that way Noted doesn't take up your memory, well, let's say when you're doing word processing. So back to note it here, I'll just load up a little um, uh, worksheet here, a slash file retrieve, and I'll bring up the first worksheet here, is, which is called Lemonade. Lemonade is just a uh, little example worksheet. Um, the purpose of note it is to allow you to, to attach pop-up notes to individual cell locations on a worksheet so that you can document and annotate your work. Um, and note it, of course, sleeps in the background until you want it. I can ask note it to show me which cells on the worksheet uh, have notes behind them by just pressing three keys. And so note it automatically highlights those cells. So let's move down and take a look at one of these notes. Okay, note it has come up and it wakes up and suspends Lotus. And right now we see a note that's been written there. I can press the F2 key and I am automatically go into an edit mode here. And so I can turn on the insert key. And this works just like any other uh, word processor. It's actually a comfortable environment. If I want to, I can momentarily lift the note off the worksheet to look underneath it mm -hmm. just while I'm typing along right here. So that's the way that works. So this is just carried along with the spreadsheet, the spreadsheet then all this. Exactly. And, um, what I can do here is I can, um, we won't save this note here, is I can actually move these cells around and the notes will follow with mm -hmm. them. And that's one of the things that makes the program special. I'll bring the note back up so I can show you some other little things that uh, Note It does. Uh, note It has a couple of extra little commands that allow you to do various things with your documentation system. For instance, if I want to search for a particular string or a particular text uh, on my uh, notepad, I can do that. Let's say I was looking for the word Monday type that in and this can be up to 32 characters. Mm -hmm. So I'll search along and note it will stop at each of the notes that I've written and highlight the word. Mm -hmm. So you can track down the cell that has that note behind it through that keyword Exactly search. and it enables me to really create a text dimension to my spreadsheet whereas I had uh, on a worksheet I might have an awkward format for making my particular notes. Yeah, that's very interesting. Now we, we should probably get over to Dale's application here, right. uh, the Prodex application. Okay let me just take note it out of here. Just and leave it there. Okay. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Dale, show us Prodex, but, but first of all, you characterize it, I think, as a second generation memory resident program. What do you mean by second right. generation? Well, we're all familiar with the pop-up tools that uh, we saw in the first generation. They included things like calculators and ASCII tables and, and simple little calendars. Well, I felt that that wasn't good enough for business professionals. They needed tools that work the way you think and you work. Uh, a business uh, daily activities consist of managing your phone and managing your time a great deal. So we've developed Prodex to, to help a busy professional uh, do exactly that. Okay, let's take a look. You're in the middle right. of a word processor yeah. right Let, now. Let's set up a situation where uh, Gary has just called me on the phone and I want to find some notes that we have been maintaining on telephone calls back and forth. Let's see how that's done. First of all, I bring up the, uh, I hit the hot key and that brings up Prodex. We see that we're in the phone directory. We now go into the phone directory, and you see we have last name, first phone, company, and reference. So we can find names in a variety of ways. But the easiest thing to do, if I want to find Gary, I just hit the K. It takes me to the K's, and lo and behold, I'm right at Gary's name. Now, remember, I wanted to find the notes because I know he was probably going to ask me some questions. So what I do is I hit F10, which brings up a command menu, and I have a series of choices here, much like the Lotus type of menu schemes. And I can just move the cursor over to the word folder, press folder, and lo and behold, there is a series of notes that I've um, had with Gary going back from his home mm -hmm. number, which isn't right, uh, <laughs> but uh, various notes that we've talked about in the, in the past. So that's a kind of a handy thing to yeah, have. And the important thing, thing is, yeah, this is sitting in the background. Yeah, you can work on your word processor, sure. and the phone rings, right. and boom, you can that's get right That's my to word that processor, pad. back to the notes. All right. Uh, let's close that up. Can you actually dial a phone from this too? I can do that. Okay. Let's say, let's pick somebody else's name just out of the blue. I 
hit the F, I want to call Bill Fly. I now can hit F9, which will dial the phone. We don't have mm -hmm. a modem on here, mm -hmm. so let's don't go and, and uh, go through that exercise. Again, when the phone is ringing, I can simply bring up the command menu, open up the folder, and here are a bunch of notes that I had with Bill. Now this is a, a mini word processor, so let me page down. I look at the last item, it says he wants six Prodex manuals for his training class. Mm -hmm. So even before he starts to tell it to me, I say, I know, I right, know, right. that's what you're looking for. <laughs> so this is to clear the loose pieces of paper yeah. off of your desk and find instant access. Now you saw how fast that was. Let's, let's pretend uh, that I have called him mm -hmm. instead. Now one of the things I can do, I can hit F9 and call him. But another thing I can do is I can log the call by simply pressing F8. And you notice it puts the date of the, of mm -hmm. the call and the start time. Now we chat away, and after the call, I can press F8 again. Puts the stop time of the call in, and now I can put in a brief comment. Let's say it was a okay, Dale, we're gonna, I'm, I'm not going to have time, unfortunately, to go through all of this. <laughs> oh, really? But it's a pretty good, uh, impressive demonstration of another RAM resident program. The ability to pull up these kinds of utilities while you're working in something else has led a lot of people to think it would be nice if you could pull up anything, like your word processor or your spreadsheet. That's led to a whole new business, as we find out in this report. To run more RAM resident programs, you need more RAM memory. And over a million users have reached for these, AST six-pack plus cards, which combine extra RAM with a clock, calendar, extra ports, and graphics enhancement. The Irvine, California company okay. is doing so well that it's not only weathered the industry slump, but doubled its income over the past year. A lot of it's market timing, but AST several years ago put together these combinations uh, previously, IBM had, had not, and to this day, still does not provide a multifunction card. They provide a, a memory card or a serial parallel card. So uh, AST was one of the first companies to provide all these features in a single slot. And it made sense because, again, uh, you kind of need all these features just to do the basic functions uh, the PC was designed for. The recent appeal of AST's RAM boards has to do with multitasking or the ability to run several programs at once, say a spreadsheet with a word processor and a spelling checker. AST Research bundles Desk View, an operating environment which acts like a traffic cop, enabling the user to switch between programs. AST Research is diversifying into other kinds of products these days, but acknowledges that these RAM cards comprise a good 40% of its business and probably will continue to do so. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. Joining us now in the studio is Robert Lunn, Robert's associate editor of PC World magazine. And Gary, Robert's going to show us some examples of the disasters that occur when these RAM resident programs bump into each other. Well, just to set it up, uh, initially there were programs like Sidekick. And what they do, they come in, into memory and they terminate and stay resident in memory. And the idea is they grab the keyboard interrupt and mm -hmm. they take the character. And if they wanted to process that character, then fine, otherwise pass it along to DOS. Well, the problem is everybody's going in there trying to get those, those keyboard interrupts, for example, or a mem certain memory areas, uh -huh. and they start to step on one right. another. And so Robert's going to show us some of the problems when they get started to step on one another. Well, there are, there are a number of symptoms that uh, can occur with memory resonant programs, and some of them are relatively uh, minor. As you're loading up a program and uh, you have a batch file that's going to be loading up super key and 10 key, which is a calculator, uh, your word processor, and so on, um, one of the first things that's going to happen is that um, the program will start loading along and it will stop. And that's because everybody wants the same keystroke. If you've pressed a key and everybody's Who finding it? that. <laughs> yeah, who's going to get it? What are you doing it? right so, now? So here comes one, and it's going to stop right here, dead. Boom. So you have to hit the keyboard and say, hello, I'd like some help, please. Mm -hmm. Super key loads, and we're going to be uh, getting into WordStar. Now, once we get into WordStar, I've got, oh, three or four programs that are mem memory resident, essentially, right now. And this is something a lot of, uh, a lot of people face because not one uh, memory resident program really solves all their problems. They have to have a couple of them. So I open a file, and... Uh, Now, Robert, is, it, is, it, is the order in which you load these programs also relevant to some extent? It can certainly make a difference, and that's uh, one of the first pieces of advice I'd give to somebody who's got several of these programs, and they're not quite getting along. If you change the loading order, sometimes you'll get better results, mm -hmm. sometimes you'll, uh, you'll get uh, the system to freeze up. It just all depends. But here we have a document, and I want to see, oh, I want to take a disk directory, so I pull up PopDOS. And then, well, maybe I want to take a look at my calculator. So there's my calculator, and I can do that, and I can add numbers. Oh. <laughs> There's a problem. They're not getting along. But let's say I want to pull up super key because I want to write a macro. 
can't do it. Can't they do don't it. like it. <laughs> now, if I change things, I can change the order that I even call them up within this particular application. There's a super key, and I could create a macro, or I could do something else. And let's say I bring up my calculator. And I can bring, oh, no, OK. <laughs> Same sort of thing. Nobody's agreeing on just exactly how to do things. Every time I'm doing this, this program wants that keystroke, this program wants that keystroke, and the one behind here wants it as well. Doesn't is this work. due to a lack of standards or of following certain rules? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a problem, I think, for most developers. They have so many standards to adhere to. There are four or five different kinds of monitors. Uh, the operating system, DOS, gets changed mm -hmm. every couple of, uh, of years. <laughs> and um, it's a real problem for developers, and it's, it's mostly a matter of, of um, caveat emptor, you know, the, the, the buyer yeah. beware, just because there's so many different things you can deal with. One uh, typical problem that a lot of uh, users encounter is because um, programs like WordStar, DBase, and others have a run utility. You can run a program mm -hmm. from within mm -hmm. your program. Mm -hmm certain programs you don't run, namely memory resident programs, because when you do, you get this. Let's run Sidekick within WordStar using its run command. And there's Sidekick, and one, two, three. What's happening? Nothing. <laughs> Where is Sidekick? <laughs> Can't pull it up. Sometimes the screen will go blank, sometimes yeah. the screen will jumble, um, and it looks like a bomb has gone off. In this case, nothing. The disk drive just keeps just, on spinning. Yeah. And that's a problem. And what caused that particular problem in this case? It's the fact that um, two programs wanting the same set of keystrokes and they're fighting, nothing can get resolved and so everything just dies. Yeah. The screen dies, you can't reboot, nothing. Now is there going to be, as we move into the graphics environment now, more gra use of graphics, uh, are we going to see this resonant uh, uh, program problem still hanging around? Well that's a, that's a real problem because most of the memory resonant programs that have been made are character-based. They're designed mm -hmm. for the old monochrome screens that most people have with their old IBM PCs, which is fine. Sidekick is a character-based program. You see text and you see little borders, that's mm -hmm. all. But if you pull up a character-based uh, uh, memory resident program inside a graphics program, you'll see a lot of haywire things going on. The screen will jumble. It'll, it'll explode because two different modes and they're always fighting. And this is something that Microsoft Windows is going to be causing problems for certain people who are just got to use Sidekick. Yeah. Yeah. So in a sense, some of these problems go away just because the environment they're working is going to go away. That's right. <laughs> uh, environments like Microsoft Windows, uh, Gem, uh, DeskView will p make uh, memory resident programs almost redundant because they're essentially doing what people want to do with memory resident programs. And that is provide lots of different utilities that you can pop up right away. Well, mm -hmm. you've certainly shown us a lot of problems that occur. In just a minute, we're going to take a look at some of the solutions, two possible solutions, one called Referee and one called Ringmaster, so stay with us. With us now in the studio is Chip Rabinowitz, Director of Software Engineering for AVTC, and Richard Krauss, Director of Product Development for Persoft Incorporated. Richard, you have other examples here of RAM programs that are getting conflict, and also you have a solution, right? That's right. Uh, the problem that I'll set up for you is um, a problem that began with a resident program, Ready, uh, which didn't work very well with an application program, an editor called Xyrite. Um, of course, all these problems that I show are version specific, and they may have been fixed and may be fixed in the future. The problem, though, uh, was solved by the people who make Xyrite when they came out with a little uh, resident program of their own called XY Keyboard. Uh, that program was supposed to allow Ready uh, to pop up successfully over that word processor Xyrite. Uh, unfortunately, that very same Fixit program uh, is incompatible with SuperKey. <laughs> Uh, from Borland. I've just loaded super key now. And now every key I type is doubled on the screen. Mm -hmm. Now I can't do anything here. I can't type dir. I can't do anything uh, because everything is doubled. Uh, I'll reboot and describe what the referee solution from Persoft is. Uh, referee is a utility program which uh, allows you to control resident programs. Uh, it lets you see what you've got loaded, what order you have loaded them. Uh, it lets you see how much memory they're using and how much, they, uh, how much memory is available. It even lets you unload programs from memory and free up that memory. Remember that RAM residents take up RAM. Let's take a look at it. Um, OK. Uh, the solution here uh, that Referee uh, has is I'm going to load a little portion of Referee called, oops, I'm going to switch to the right directory. Uh. I'm going to load a little portion of Referee called RefWatch. That portion of Referee now watches me load other programs. I'm going to load that same XY keyboard program, which fixes uh, uh, Xyrite so that it works with Ready. Now I'm going to load SuperKey again. Now you remember before that SuperKey, uh, at this point, every key that I typed was doubled. Mm -hmm. It's no longer doubled. Now you're working. It works fine. Uh, and uh, let me also load 
uh, Ready here. Remember that XY keyboard is the program that lets Ready pop up inside of Xyrite. Uh, now the reason that this all works is that uh, Referee has the capability of temporarily disabling or deactivating mm -hmm. loaded resident programs. And the key is that a disabled or deactivated resident program can't interfere with other through. resident <laughs> programs. Uh, if I go into the editor, uh, uh, which is Xyrite, uh, we'll see that I am still able to pop up ready. Mm. That wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't loaded that special little utility program. Mm -hmm. uh, when I get out, however, of, uh, of Xyrite, uh, I'm back at the DOS level, and I still have both ready available, uh, and I have super key. So those are both active, and they're not, it's not conf conflicting with the XY keyboard. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that it worked, I move into referee's main menu. Notice that referee did all that transparently. The user didn't have to see anything. This is a program that lets you control referee ahead of time. Uh, one of the screens is a control screen, and it shows what programs are loaded, whether they're, uh, what order they were loaded in. The check marks, notice next to super key and ready, indicate that they're active. XY uh, Xyrite keyboard fix is inactive. That's why my system didn't start doubling characters. Rich, sorry to interrupt, but I want to get Chip in here. Now, Chip, you're working with another solution, a possible solution to this RAM conflict problem, which is called Ringmaster. What is that? Well, Ringmaster is a set of standards for uh, RAM resident program developers to follow, as well as a driver that will allow them to do miscellaneous functions necessary. Um, it's not so much a different solution than uh, referee, but it kind of works hand in hand. As a matter of fact, uh, Persoft and the referee developers are working with us in our development of Ringmaster. But what specifically is, does Ringmaster do that? I mean, how do you solve the problem? Well, one of the, the main reason for the problem, one of the biggest problems, is the keyboard interrupts mm -hmm. and everybody watching the same interrupt. What Ringmaster is going to do is not have everybody watch the keyboard, but Ringmaster will watch it, and then when somebody wants it, we'll pass it on to them, okay? And the, pro and the developers of other programs will allow, uh, will have all of yeah. that passing. Mm -hmm. Now, I uh, guess you're one of the first developers to, in fact, use this. You've got a, a new product called InSync, which is, is going to take advantage of this. Explain InSync okay. to us. InSync is what we call desktop teleconferencing, okay? Um, that is going to be the first product to take advantage of the Ringmaster standard. Desktop teleconferencing allows... So it's, it's uh, RAM resident. That's correct. It's okay. a RAM resident program that allows uh, me here out in, on the West Coast to conference with somebody, uh, for example, in my office back in New York. Okay, well, and show us how you do that. You have an example of that, right? Yes, <laughs> so I happen to have an it. example so of that got, right here. You've got a Lotus spreadsheet okay. up. That's correct. This is a Lotus spreadsheet, okay? And also, RAM resident, I have in sync. okay? Now, I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet, and I'm arguing with my sales manager in New York, for example, on some sales figures. And so we're going to talk about this he's spreadsheet. He's got the same spreadsheet up he's on his He's got computer. the same spreadsheet, and he's got Lotus 1, 2, 3 up, okay? So I'm going to go back down, and now my uh, compatriot in New York should be uh, going over okay, here. he's playing with your spreadsheet. Now, he's going with my hand. My, both of my hands are nowhere near my <laughs> keyboard, and he's going to go change my uh, sales figures over there, okay? He says he can sell 100,000. Copies, all right. Oh, he mistyped. <laughs> okay. Never okay. Saw it. He okay. said, he's, and I said, no way he can sell 100,000 copies. I say he can only sell about 80,000 copies. Mm -hmm. All right. Both of us can interact within the product with ourselves. I just want to point out, okay, that I can type to him. Mm-hmm. And he's reading the same screen in New York now, reading your message. Of course, if you had another phone alongside, you could use that too. That's correct. Right um, not only <laughs> could we... And <laughs> there he is talking back to you. That's a very impressive demonstration. Chip Richard, thank you very much. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's Computer News. random access file this week, there are indications that the personal computer business may be on the rebound. IBM reports it sold more PCs in the month of September than in any previous month in its history. One investment firm has just upped its projections for the growth of personal computer sales from 20% annual growth to 25%. And the fall Comdex show, which ended last week in Las Vegas, was crowded and upbeat, with lots of vendors saying business was up. 
One apparent reason for the upbeat mood is the growing interest in upgrading to faster computers. The new 8386 machines were the highlight at Comdex. Six companies showed off new 386-based computers, including Convergent, K-Pro, and Zenith. A Zenith spokesman said using a 386 computer is like driving a Porsche, while using an old 8088 16-bit computer is like riding a bicycle. The other surprise star of Comdex was the laptop portable. IBM reported healthy sales for its convertible, saying it cannot keep up with demand. Toshiba says it can't keep up with demand for its T1100 and its high-end T3100 portable. And NEC introduced a new portable called the Multispeed that it says is the fastest laptop on the market, capable of running at 9.5 megahertz. One surprise at Comdex was the unveiling of a new PC-AT compatible from China. It's called the Great Wall PC. The Chinese also showed off an XT compatible selling for $686. Epson jumped into the scanner business this week with an innovative approach. It showed off a scanner that fits into an Epson printer in the slot where you usually insert the ribbon cartridge. With the scanner cartridge in place, the printer becomes a scanner and can read into memory the page that rolls through the printer. You then replace the scanner cartridge with the usual ribbon cartridge and the printer prints out the document you just scanned. Let's turn to software in this week's review with Paul Schindler. If you've ever wondered how smart you are, there's a computer program that can help you decide. It's called IQ Test. Now, let me be as careful as the authors of the program. They point out that interpretation of IQ results is a tricky subject, but that doesn't reduce the entertainment value of this fascinating program. I just wouldn't use it to make important decisions about yourself or your children. Now, keep an eye on the opening sequence. It's almost the last animation you'll see. The program starts by kindly asking you your name and age and whether you want to take an IQ test. Of course, if you didn't want to, why did you boot the program up? Anyway, there's two kinds of questions in this program. Some are text and some involve graphics. Using these two methods, they test four different kinds of skills. Verbal, visual, math, and logic skills. Note the clock at the bottom. You are being timed. And don't miss the Pac-Man character at the end. IQ Test comes from Rational Designs in Woodland Hills, California, and costs $40. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Xerox took an interesting approach to spelling checkers this week, announcing spelling checker hardware. It's a little black box called PC Typewrite, which sits between your keyboard and your PC. When you misspell a word, the box beeps at you. Xerox says the spelling box solves the problem of having spelling checkers tie up valuable RAM space. Another innovative software product announced by Mastersoft, it's called Word for Word, and it solves the problem of what do you do when you buy a new word processor and you have all your files in the format of the old word processor. Word for Word converts not only the text, the easy part, but converts all your formatting commands. Xerox has announced a grant of $5 million to create a center for learning methods in Palo Alto. The new Xerox center will focus on artificial intelligence and try to develop AI-based teaching systems that can be used for adult literacy training and for job retraining. Finally, if you remember the movie 2001, you remember how the talking computer. Well, it's 2001, folks. The Marshall Space Flight Center just unveiled its new astronaut module for future space flights, and the module has a talking onboard computer, actually 18 of them, called George. And when anything goes wrong, George announces the malfunction to the crew and tells them what to do to fix the problem. But will George take over? Stay tuned. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide.